So guys, now let me show you the demo program which demonstrate the concept of joinable and detached threads. So I'm in the directory multithreadic bible slash thread basics slash joinable and inside this directory you will find the file joinable example dot c, right? So it is this file that we will going to discuss. So in this program what I will going to show is that our main thread will going to launch two threads, right? Let those two threads be pthread2 and pthread3, right? So these are the two p thread handle for the two child threads which our main thread will going to fork. Now the functionality of this program is that that when our main thread create child threads then at the time of creation of child threads our main thread will supply an integer value as an argument to these child threads. These child threads simply compute the square of that integer value and return the result to the main thread, right? So in other words, these two child threads does nothing but they only compute the square of an integer input passed to them, right? So to start with, the very first thing that we will do in our main thread is to create one of the child threads using pthread handle, right? And we are passing the second argument as the value whose square this thread needs to compute, right? We will shortly discuss the implementation of this function thread underscore create. This is user defined function and not a standard POSIX function. Similarly, the main thread will going to create another thread using another handle that is pthread3 and let us pass the integer value 10 as an argument to this function, right? So now let us discuss the implementation of the function thread underscore create. So as you can see thread underscore create function accepts two argument. The first argument is a pointer to the thread handle and the second argument is the integer value that we have passed. Let us call that integer value as thread id, right? Now the responsibility of this function is to create a new thread. Now we need to take a variable of type p thread attribute t, right? This variable is used to specify the properties of the new thread which we are creating, right? Since we are going to create a joinable thread, to specify the properties or attributes of the thread that we are going to create, the POSIX standard provides us the API pthread attribute set detached state. This API is specifically used to specify whether the thread that we are going to create is a joinable thread or detached thread right so in this api simply pass the address of the attribute variable and pass whether and pass the flag which states whether your thread is a joinable thread or detached thread right so POSIX standard provides this constant value which is p thread create joinable if you want to create a detached thread then in that case you should have specified the value p thread create detest right so depending what you pass as the second parameter to this attribute the new thread that you are going to create will be joinable or detest so this function simply sets whatever value you specify as a second argument in this attribute variable now you don't have to worry about the inner definition of this attribute variable you just simply have to pass the address of this variable as a first argument to this function right and now we are in a position to invoke an api pthread underscore create in order to launch a new thread right so line number 41 is a fork point and let us create a thread pass the thread handle for which you are creating a thread pass the attribute which we have specified as joinable pass the thread callback function which we will going to specify shortly and pass the argument to the function now the argument to the function is nothing but it is a integer number which we have passed as a second argument to thread create function and as i told you that we should always pass the heap memory storage or static storage as an argument to the function so it is for this reason that I will going to take a heap memory to store this integer input, right? 
So here I am passing the address of the heap memory and not the local variable, right? So line number 44 is a fork point and it will going to create a thread which will start execute in the function thread function callback, right? Now let us discuss the implementation of this thread callback function. So in the thread function callback, as I said that the only meaningful work that the child thread will going to do is to compute the square of the input which we have passed as an argument to the thread, right? So let us extract the argument which we have passed to the thread callback function, right? And now, and since we have read the value of this argument into a local variable, there is absolutely no need of this argument anymore. We can free this memory, right? And now let us allow this thread to actually consume some time in its execution, right? You can follow any logic, but what I will going to do is that I will simply create a loop and I will simply print some message which will indicate me that this thread is doing its work. And I will do a sleep of one seconds and I will make sure that this thread execute in a loop as many times as the number integer that you passed as an argument to this function, right? So all this logic is for the purpose to simulate as if the thread takes some finite amount of time in order to do its job, right? And after it has completed its job, the thread has to return its result. So result of the thread should always be returned in a heap storage. So it is for this reason that I have my locked the memory in which I will going to store the square of the integer, right? So remember the thread ID was the integer number that we passed as an argument to this thread. And I'm simply computing the square of this number and storing in this result variable, right? And result is a pointer to the heap storage. Now this thread function should return the address of this heap storage, right? It can do so by simply typecasting this storage pointer as a void star because the return value of the thread function is always void star, right? So you can see that this is the implementation of this function. And in this function, we simply choose to spend some finite amount of time, which will mimic as if the thread is doing some work. And then we simply compute the square of the integer and we simply return this integer as a result, right? So now coming to the main function, you can see that we have now created two threads. The first thread will spend two seconds while doing its work, while the second thread will spend 10 seconds while doing its work, right? After two seconds, the thread two will going to terminate. And after 10 seconds, the thread three will going to terminate, right? So now let us see how to ensure that our main thread, which is a parent thread of these two child thread, will going to join these two threads. So now let us make our main thread to wait for the thread number two to join it, right? It simply means that our main thread has to invoke an API thread underscore join, right? And it has to pass the handle of the thread number two, that is P thread two. And now in order to collect the result from the thread number two, the second argument of the p thread function is used to collect the result which is returned from the child thread. So thread result two is actually a variable of type void star, right? And you have to pass the address of the void star memory location so that when the thread number two will come and join this join point which is on line number 88, then the result of the child thread will be pointed by this pointer, void thread result two, right? So it's a pointer type variable. So when the main thread hit the line number 88, it will get blocked, right? So before blocking, let our main thread print some meaningful message to tell us what it is exactly doing, right? So I'm simply printing a message that our main thread is blocked on the pthread join API for, for thread number two, right? So main function blocked on pthread join for thread number two, right? Now our main thread will execute the line number 93 only when the child thread pthread two has completed its execution. 
and has joined our main thread at line number 91, right? pthread join is a blocking API, remember, and main thread will stay blocked until the child thread pthread2 join our main thread, right? So when our main thread will get unblocked at pthread join function, the result returned by the pthread2 will be available in this memory location, right? So let us see that what is there in this memory location. Always check whether the return pointer of the child thread is null or not because a thread may return null, right? And in case if it has not returned null, it means that it is some meaningful memory with some meaningful contents. So now let us print the content which is returned by the thread2. So what I am doing, I am simply type casting the thread result to variable into int star and I am printing the value, right? It means that the square of the integer is written into this memory and I am simply printing that integer number from this memory. Now, after I have extracted the result, I will simply release the memory, right? Remember, this thread result 2 was the dynamically allocated memory in the thread callback function. So you need to free it, right? Otherwise, you will end up causing memory leak. So after collecting the result from the child thread, never forget to release the memory, right? It is the responsibility of the parent thread to release the memory which is used by the child thread to provide results, right? And now simply you can assign the thread result to variable to null, right? And now similar approach we need to do for the thread number three. So for thread number three, I will again print some message to tell the user that main thread is being blocked for the child thread number three, right? Now our main thread will invoke pthread join function again, but this time it will invoke this function on the thread handle 3, right? And it will pass the address of the void star type variable to collect the result returned by the pthread 3, right? So simply after invoking the second pthread join function, our main thread is get, our main thread now gets blocked at line number 105 waiting for the thread number 3 to complete its execution and return back. Now again, our main thread is supposed to collect the result which is provided by the thread number 3. So it means that we will going to follow up the same logic and we will try to read the integer value which is, which is returned by the thread number 3, right? So this completes the implementation of our demo program. So you can see that things are pretty much simple and straightforward. So in this demo program, what I have done is that from the main thread, I have created two child threads, right? And these two child threads simply computes the square of the integer value, which is passed as an argument to these threads, right? And this main thread first wait for the thread number two to join. And when thread number two comes back and join the main thread, then main thread collects the result provided by the thread number 2, right? After that, our main thread waits for the thread number 3 to join, right? And once the thread number 3 comes back and join the main thread, the main thread simply collects the result which is provided by the thread number 3, right? So the same thing is depicted in this diagram. We have a main thread. It has created two thread, thread number two and thread number three. At join point J1, our main thread is waiting for the thread number two to join. And at join point J2, our main thread is waiting for the thread number three to join, right? So guys, I'm going to run the demo program. And the expectation is that, that the thread number two must execute for two seconds. And on termination, it should return value four to the main thread, right? And thread number three must execute for 10 seconds. And after its termination, it should return the value 100 to the main thread, right? So you can see that when I run the program, our thread number two runs for two seconds and then it returns the result four to the main thread, right? When you run the program, you can see that the main function or the main thread gets blocked at the first pthread join call, right? That is, it is waiting for the thread number two to join. While the thread number two does its work for two seconds 
and then it gets terminated and returned to the main thread to join the main thread right and when the main thread and when the thread number two joins the main thread the main thread collects the result of the thread number two and it just print the result which is returned by the thread number two right now here you can see that because the main thread has been unblocked from the first p thread join the main thread then resume its execution beyond the first join point and then it gets blocked on the second join point right and while the thread number three execute for a few more seconds when thread number three comes back and join the main thread the main thread collects the result of the thread number three and print it right and after that our main thread terminates as well so now in this program if i ask you one question what would have been the scenario if p thread number two was made to run for 10 seconds and then p thread number three was made to run for two seconds right so i would request you to change these values and try to understand by observing how your program behaves when you made the child threads to wait for different different amount of time intervals right